Dear participants, dear friends, I would like to extend to you a heartfelt good morning and invite you to our second session of module three, course one. The subject today is the five human values and Christianity is the first one from the local major religions. It will be presented to us by our dear Brigitte Castan Jacob, who is living in Israel and very near the Lake Tiberias or the Sea of Galilee, as we will see in the beautiful photos that she has taken for us. Dear Brigitte, good morning. Good morning, dear Vasiliki. Thank you for your introduction. So indeed, yes, I have the privilege to live here near the places where Jesus has lived and taught, near the Lake of Galilee, the Lake of Genezareth, Genezareth, like it has few names, but it is the same place. Uh, it's like five, living five minutes from the lake and 10 minutes from all the churches that commemorate the great events and miracles uh, done by Jesus, the events where Jesus was present near Kafarnaum, which is called here Kfar Nahum, which is the village of Nahum, near Tabcha, which is Heptahegon, where there were seven, there are still seven sources, near the place of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes, and of course, last but not least, like 10 minutes drive for the Mount of Beatitudes. And we'll see, uh, we'll talk about the Beatitudes, what Jesus said, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. So all these places are fully filled with Jesus' uh, glory, with light and love, and with his message. And every year out of Corona, COVID years, of course, millions of pilgrims come to visit. I don't know if millions, but anyway, many, many pilgrims come to visit all these places to reconnect with that special energy and with Jesus' message. So now we see the presentation uh, that is connected to it. Quite a few of the photos that you will see have been taken at the Church of Beatitudes, like this one, you see it is over, it is looking over the Lake of, the lake of Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee, the Sea of Gennesaret. This is, like many of the other photos, taken from the Church of the Beatitudes. It is called, until now, the Mount of Happiness, here in Hebrew, and the Mount of Beatitudes. It is at the northern side of the Sea of Galilee. And this is one of the photos from the gardens. We'll see some other photos from the church itself. So we see the connection between the human values that we have been talking about uh, so much in the previous modules and lessons. How is it connected with Christianity? We first so see a small introduction, a short introduction about Christianity, general lines that we shall see now. So Christianity is, of course, uh, connected with, first of all, the, uh, we'll start with Christianity, as we see, because it is the major religion in Europe. And uh, as we'll see, one of the most uh, well-known in the world. But let us start with reminding the message that we have heard in Satya Sai Education in Human Values. The message of unity. All the religions, all the faith are a reflection of the eternal truth that we have learned about. And the message of uh, Satya Sai education in human values is the one of unity, the one of tolerance, saying, let the different faiths exist, let them flourish, let the glory of God be sung in all the languages, in a variety of tunes, that should be the ideal. Let us respect the differences between faith and recognize them as valid as long as they do not extinguish the flame of unity. 
And we know very well, of course, the logo of the ESE of South Europe and the other logos that we have been talking about. And the symbol is always with the flame in the middle, the flame of unity, the flame of eternal truth that is common to all religions. But together with uh, that message of unity, we'll see today what is specific to the message of Christianity. So we'll talk now more about Christianity. As we know, it is one of the three Abrahamic monotheist religions after Judaism and before Islam chrono in chronological uh, sequence. It is based on the life of teachings of Jesus of Nazareth, who has lived and taught around these places. It is today the world's largest religion it, it, it with one third of the global population, almost three billion people who believe in the message of Christianity of, Christ, of Jesus, and it is a majority of the population in 157 countries. As we know, he has been created by Jesus 2,000 years ago. I mean, he didn't mean to create Christianity, but his followers have created Christianity based on his message. We know that his message was written by his followers with the four known and official gospels. There are many other scriptures written by his followers, are the epistles, as we see some examples of, and letters of his followers to uh, the others. So from that small group of people that Jesus himself had selected to follow him, to be his main followers, that message has spread as the good news, the gospel, to so many people. We know that it has been inspiring so many. We know all the masterpieces of the works of art that cover the earth. For instance, the architecture with the churches that were built since the beginning, almost in all kinds of styles, Roman, Gothic, really masterpieces. We know, for instance, that in France of the Middle Age and other countries, people that worked so hard in the fields or in whatever work they were doing during the day, they, we would, uh, at the end of the day or on, uh, on Sundays probably, build together the cathedrals, like for instance, Notre Dame de Paris and other charter and many other places. First in the Roman style, then in the Gothic style, after returning, some people returned from the Crusaders and brought the rules of the sacred geometry from the Temple of Jerusalem. So architecture, we know of other plastic arts, beautiful sculptures that were inspired by Jesus' message, paintings on all these churches and all the places, and of course, music. Muse, music has been present ever as one of the main sacred arts by all, in all religions, of course. In Christianity, it has expressed music, it had expressed Jesus' message in all kinds of tunes, all kinds of styles around the years. We know that in Europe it has developed more and more. And just we'll listen now to one small example. It is the Ave Maria, which as we know is the message, the message by which everything started in Christianity, which is the message of the Archangel Gabriel to Miriam. Miriam is the right name of uh, Maria or Mary. The original name in Hebrew is Miriam or Mariam. And the original name of Jesus is Yeshua, which means God saved. It was the name that Joseph, his uh, father, was told to use to, to name Jesus. So it is sung by the nuns of Bethlehem, who are actually from France and Italy. We can hear that to their pronunciation. But they made a CD, they chant, they, they sing uh, some of the scriptures in Hebrew, which is the closest to the original language that was known to Jesus. Actually, at the time of Jesus, the language spoken was Aramaic. We don't have now an original in Aramaic, which was the language spoken 2000 years ago here, around here. But the written language was the one of the scriptures, which was in Hebrew. So we now enjoy just for one minute or so, the nuns of Bethlehem singing the Ave Maria in Hebrew.
So we see one of these pieces of art, not very well known, but uh, it is in the original language. And now we'll see again during these 2000 years, a few examples of how Jesus' message, Christianity's message has been inspiring seekers of truth, seekers of service to mankind, seekers of devotion, of union with God. One of them who has been rediscovered not that long ago was Hildegard von Bingen in the 12th century. She was actually a genius. She had visions also of, uh, you know, being united, uh, directly receiving messages from the Holy Spirit. And she wrote these visions. She composed music and she also composed the text, a very rare example of a composer who composed both the text, inspired text, and the music that were sung by her nuns. She was the abbess of a monastery. She was in a monastery since a very young age. And she was so uh, wise and uh, intelligent that even the Pope at the same time would come to ask for, to take her advice. So really an amazing uh, lady, a saint, inspired by the message of Christ. She of course knew a lot about plants and until today, uh, remedies, natural remedies or plants are used by many, rediscovering her message. She was in Germany, of course, yes. And the next seeker that we'll see, also a seeker of truth, and of devotion, seeking union with God, was Master Eckhart, also from Germany. He had beautiful saying, uh, saying that in the in the soul, in the center of the in the soul is silence, and there is God. He was condemned for heresy, but uh, anyway, he died before they came to 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 uh, to capture him for heresy. But his message is very profound. And also now during the 20th century, he has been actually rediscovered by many uh, and has inspired, has been inspired many. He is one of the only ones to profess the message of Advaita, if you wish, the message of unity, of non-duality. The next example in Christianity is the very well-known San Francisco de Assisi, everybody knows him. He has been an example of love extended to all creation, the animals and the elements, and we know his beautiful canticle written to all creators. He calls the sun our brother and the moon our sister and the wind and the animals and of course the earth. So he's actually a great source of inspiration today when people are getting at last more conscious of the importance of respecting Mother Earth, the elements, nature, and the animals. So he's a wonderful example until today, an example of love and nonviolence. We see how all these people, of course, incarnate the values, the human values that we have been talking about. The next ambel, example is also very well known, Saint Teresa of Avila from Spain. She was also highly educated, also a theologian like Hildegard and like Master Eckhart. And she also had visions like Hildegard and she wrote about them. And some of her most uh, important and well known ideas are about the inner castle, that we all have like an inner castle in our soul. In that inner castle takes place the Yehos Gamos, which is the union, divine union, divine love between God and our soul. So very inspiring to many. Uh, she was a very special and brave, uh, uh, you know, one of the mothers of the church. Close to her was also San Juan de la Cruz and John of the Cross also with the same kind of ideas, also connected to the values of truth, of devotion, and of divine love, discovering in his soul that union of God and our soul. And now we'll jump uh, over time to more modern <laughs> examples of people who incarnate uh, the Christian message, the message of Jesus, especially the values of love and service. Father Damien is not so well known. He is from what is now Belgium, 
from the 20th century, he prayed ardently to become a missionary. And actually he was sent to one of the most difficult places on the planet, which is in Hawaii, in the outcast island, in the small island for outcasts, for people who contracted leprosy lepers and he asked to be with them so he lived with them he served them he helped them and he wrote beautiful sentences beautiful ideas about how these people are loved by god you know they were sent to that island of course not to contaminate the others and he gave them so much love and he served them and helped them healed whatever he could and in a quite short time actually he con contracted himself leprosy of course he was contaminated and he said that they he just chose to live among lepers to take all of them together with him to Jesus Christ also not that long ago we know the next example very well she's very well known mother Teresa also born in Europe Albania then Macedonia the, the northern republic of Macedonia and she is uh, she was an example of charity of uh, love in action of right action for uh, under favorized populations children especially in India she received the prize for that we know her very well and the last example that we'll show here is the or probably not so well known either from Bosnia Herzegovina friar Ivo Markovic is he's the only one of these examples still alive he was born in 1950 and bec uh, because of the war that took place you know in Yugoslavia in ex-Yugoslavia he has been playing a very important role until today to create non-violence to start to try to promote peace and non-violence through dialogue with within the different um, parties you know the Muslims the Christians uh, Catholic Christians Orthodox Christians he has been trying until now to create a dialogue to create a choir again the role of musing as uniting all he created a choir that is still active today with people from these different religions and these different countries that once belonged to Yugoslavia. Even his father was killed trying to do the same and he has been very brave even during the war going from one party to the other and trying to create dialogue. So these are just a very few examples. Of course, there are many, many examples from many other countries. These are only for Europe, most of them from South Europe, as you can see on the Father Damien is in Belgium, was in Belgium. Of course, we have also examples like Martin Luther King in the United States, uh, they're trying to promote justice. So non-violence and many, many of these people, some of them well known, some of them not so known, but who have been inspired by Jesus message or, and the values that he promoted of, uh, you know, love, peace, non-violence, righteousness, and the connection to inner truth. So these were just a few examples. We'll go on now to see the connection between the human values again and that message of Christianity. We already saw that uh, connection, that quote, just a reminder, that there is an organic link between the five human values and the human personality because we understand when we understand the truth of who we really are this leads us to right conduct or righteousness right conduct in turn brings peace within and without and this fills us with unconditional love and non-violence for all creation Thus, the five values of truth, righteousness, peace, love, and non-violence are like the petals of the same flower. And this is a background of a, a, a Sai a devotee who is participating also in Satya Sai education in human values in Brazil. The wonderful message of all these petals being connected. 
we now see more precisely how these values are connected. Christianity are connected to the values, the human values, and of course we start with love because as we know that love is a thread that connects all the other values and it is very dominant in Jesus' message, in the message of Christianity. As we saw, love in words and thoughts is truth, love expressed in action is righteousness or right action, love in feelings is peace, and love in understanding is non-violence. We'll see further uh, explanations of how love is connected. We know that in our search for love, as love is the most cherished of aspirations, we normally refer to feelings and emotions. But we saw in previous lessons that Satyatai education in human values guides us to look deeper identifying love as the most natural quality of mankind, actually the universe, a subtle and yet powerful energy that each one of us is constantly transmitting and receiving. An energy that sustains the world and creation and that moves the sun and the moon and other stars, as it was quoted. So we know that love is actually the state of consciousness and energy and not a feeling and not an emotion. We'll see further quotes and examples. So we know that uh, it was to teach the greatness of divine love that Jesus came and it was his prime task. Here we see Jesus preaching again on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, the Sea of Tiberias, first to the disciples that he had chosen himself, the apostles, that were quite simple people, but he chose them for their inner qualities of righteousness. And then he started teaching more and more to the crowds that were attracted by that message. We'll see further examples and further quotes of what is that divine love. And Jesus talked a lot about the kingdom of heaven. This is a major concept of Jesus' message and of his followers. Jesus thought that we should seek the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God is also called. To enter that kingdom, we must cultivate loving hearts. And then, our hearts would become the kingdom of heaven. This is explained very clearly. There are many definitions of what is the kingdom of heaven, some by Jesus himself, like for instance, Jesus said in John 18, 36, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting to defend me. My kingdom is not of this realm. Also, uh, Jesus said, as quoted by Matthew in 1345, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid again. And from joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. And Paul, in one of his uh, letters, said, that wrote that the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said also in the Gospel of Luke 8, 10, to you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is in parables, so that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. So we see that it had a few levels of understanding what that kingdom of heaven is. And it is not a kingdom, I mean, uh, like uh, people expected at the time of Jesus, you know, that then the Jews were uh, conquered by the Romans. So they were expecting that the Messiah would come, a Messiah would come and free them from the domination of the Romans, before there was the dominations of the Greeks as well. 
and not the, the Romans at the time of Jesus were there. So the Jews at that time, 2000 years ago, when Jesus was there, they were expecting a Messiah that would deliver them, free them from the domination of the Romans. Like they had a few revolts before Jesus and then after Jesus. And most of them were actually very disappointed because Jesus didn't, uh, was not, didn't uh, say that he was that Messiah that was, that would deliver them from the political point of view. The message that Jesus brought was not of a kingdom that he would rule uh, politically. No, he would not become the king of such a kingdom freed from the Romans, but he talked about that inner kingdom that is supposed to reflect the kingdom of God, the kingdom, the divine kingdom, you know, where there is only peace and love. We'll see a few quotes of what happens after death at the last judgment. But the way to access that kingdom after death is to realize it in our hearts. So it is exactly as we learned about the human values, right? We learned that they are like a treasure chest. It's a treasure chest in our heart, in our spiritual hearts. And in that treasure chest are all the five human values. So similarly, Jesus spoke of that treasure in our hearts, in our spiritual hearts, and that the way to uh, seek the kingdom of heaven to enter that kingdom is to cultivate loving hearts, to connect with all the values that inside our hearts, love, peace, non-violence, etc. And through that inner connection with the kingdom of heaven inside our hearts, to that connection to the five human values in our hearts, then our hearts would become the kingdom of of heaven and, of course, guarantee uh, a better future at the last judgment or after death. We'll see further what one of, uh, of the great uh, messages of Jesus. This is a very well known. It is the great commandment. It is also connected with the value of love, of course. The first part we'll see, the great commandment was not new at all to the Jews of the time. It is still today uh, actually played on the national radio in Israel at 5.58 uh, every morning. And it is the great, mom, uh, the great commandment to Judaism, the Shema Israel, here Israel. So one of the scribes came up and asked Jesus, which commandment is the most important of all? And Jesus answered, the most important is, hear, O Israel, you know, Shema Israel, the Lord our God, the God, the Lord is one. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. You know, it is the most sacred prayer to the Jews until today. The Jews say it a few times a day. They are supposed to say that before they die, you know, the connection to the divinity, the way it is taught. And again, I go on, it is still the same prayer. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Until then, again, it is that same prayer that is playing on the radio every morning and that it is a recite that is recited every day by many pious uh, Jews. Then is what Jesus stressed, what is new in a way. Also, it was also in the message of the Old Testament, as the Christians call it. But this is the difference with before, because Jesus stressed that new message. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And this is very well known, of course, as the main message of Jesus. And that message has been inspiring all these people and these, uh, you know, souls and the seekers of truth and that have been implementing that message of universal love also for the others. Jesus said there is no other commandment greater than these. And we know that Jesus was teaching in parables because most of the people who came to listen to him were not learned people. There were all kinds of people. On the Sermon of the Mount, they say there were 5,000 people who had come all from all the directions. And Jesus performed these miracles from them, also the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. 
to uh, give them food and, uh, and water was provided. But who is that neighbor? That is the difference. We'll see better in the next slides, who is that neighbor? And we know from the parables of the, the, the Samaritan. We know of that parable, a very famous one, uh, Samaritan, the good Samaritan, to make the la that long story short, uh, a, a Jew was walking the road from the Jerusalem to Jericho near the Dead Sea. It was about six, 16, 17 kilometers until today, but then the road was not secure at all. There were robbers and thieves. And that Jew, according to the story told by Jesus, uh, was walking there and he was indeed attacked and robbed and beaten very badly by those, by robbers, by a group of robbers. They beat him very violently and he was left on the road, bleeding, hurt, not able to get up. And then Jesus says a story that uh, two important honorable people from the Jewish clergy came to pass. The first one was a Kohen, a great priest, very the most honorable uh, religious position of the Jews. There was still the Temple of Jerusalem then. And uh, he was uh, there, you know, that priest, uh, very the most important person at, uh, at the temple. He passed by that uh, Jew uh, that was laying on the road, but did not stop and did not help. Then came another official of the temple, a Levi, a Levi, a Levite, who was a bit next uh, under that religious hierarchy. He was supposed to know uh, the law and the prophets and to teach the law. So he was very well known, that Levi, but he didn't stop and didn't help the Jew that was lying on the road. And then, see, said Jesus, came another man, a Samaritan. Now, we know that 2,000 years ago, the Jews and the Samaritans were enemies. They really didn't like each other. But still, that good Samaritan did stop, and he did uh, tend to the wounds of that wounded Jew, who was his enemy. He put on them. Uh, Jesus uh, goes into uh, precise details to make it more lively into the minds of people that uh, the people then, the Jews that were listening to him, were expecting uh, that the, the honorable Jews, you know, the high priest, the Kohen, and then the Levi, the Levite, would be the ones to help, to put into action the, the principles of the law, right? But no, the, ones who, the one who did it was that good Samaritan, the enemy. He washed the wounds with oil and disinfected with wine and he bandaged the wounds, and he took that uh, wounded Jew to one of the inns on the way from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he paid for, his, uh, to, 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 for him to be able to stay there because that Jew has been uh, stolen of all of his money and possession. So we see that that example of the, of the Good Samaritan has struck uh, the spirits of many people. It was totally new for the Jews of the time. We'll see later the differences when we talk about the value of nonviolence. But here we see an example of love in action, of righteousness, of right conduct. So, so Jesus introduced that concept that the ones who practice the values of love, nonviolence, love in action, are the ones who are truly uh, implementing and practicing and demonstrating the values taught by uh, the message of God. We see here that same message that is in the first ep epistle of John uh, saying, Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Very clear message uh, repercussed or resonating in John, who understood very deeply Jesus' message. We'll see now 
of this message is exactly the same as the one taught in the Satyasai education of human values. We saw this quote quite a few times. Love is God. God is love. Exactly the same message. Where there is love, there God is certainly evident. And the uh, practice to start the day with love, feel the day with love, end the day with love, this is the way to God. So again, the same idea, as you see, in Christianity and in Satyasai education of human values, that value of love is central, very important. It is the thread uniting all the other values. And this is the path to the inner kingdom, to the kingdom of heaven, the divine kingdom. And now we'll see how this extends to the other values, just ending with another quote, very important also connected to with love. We say that we talk about what happens after death. So this is a very long quote. It is a very short part of it here. Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven after death. What will happen after death? So he said that, jo that, that the king, which is uh, God, will take the righteous, the one who practice the righteousness, uh, right action, to his right, time, right side, and he will say, for I was hungry, and you gave me food, and I was thirsty, and you gave me to drink, and I was a, a stranger, and you took me in, as I was naked, and you clothed me, I was sick, and you visited me, I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous shall answer God, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry? And when did, you f did we feed you? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothed you? And this is the important answer that uh, Jesus uh, puts in the mouth of God, saying, the king shall answer, saying, truly, I say to you, in as much as you have done these things for the least of these, my brothers, you have done it to me. It is in Matthew chapter 25. So again, the very important idea that is also in such a side education in human values and the value of truth that we'll see also soon, that um, if we know, I mean, if we do something to another person, it is doing it to the divinity in them. It is the divine in us, the divinity in us, or the human values in us that are relating to the human values and the divinity and the divine spark in the other person. So now we'll see much shortly after we saw the thread of love that connects all the human value of love as expressed in Christianity, which will be very short now about the other values. Let's go to the value of truth. And let's see a few quotes uh, expressed by Jesus or by his uh, disciples. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. It is in John. And again in John, the important quote saying, truth will set you free. We saw when we learned the value of truth, according to Satyasai education in human values, that when we know who we are and what we are truly, then we can be free. We are free from all the false identifications with our body, our emotions and feelings, with our thoughts and opinions. When we know who we are, from our possessions, of course, when we know who we are, then we are free. We saw that also with the myth of the cavern of the cave by Platon. Truth is setting us free. We'll see further. This is again photos from the Lake of Galilee. Every man is to begin with a messenger of God. When he fulfills his duties as a messenger, he realizes that he is a son of God and then achieves oneness with the divine. This we saw when we learned the value of truth, that first everyone is you know, connected with the human values, but maybe no, no, not so much conscious of them being in our spiritual hearts. And the more we become conscious of these values in our hearts, and the more we identify with love, peace, nonviolence, truth, etc., in our hearts, then we become more 
identical with the divine principle in us. So we become more of the essence of God, which is exactly the kingdom of heaven that we talked about. It is in all religions, in Christianity it is expressed as we saw. So the more we identify with these human values in our heart, the more we implement and we incarnate the eternal message of all religions to be who we truly are, that inner self, and then we behave accordingly with righteousness, and then we have peace of mind and in our heart, and then we are non-violent, because how can we have hurt anyone or anything when we know who we truly are? We'll go on now, and we'll go to the value of righteousness. This is a church of the Beatitudes, on the Mount of Beatitudes. Let us see a few quotes on righteousness and how it is connected to what we have said. You see, in the gardens, there are these words for in Latin, and uh, here is the translation in English. It's in both languages, in the gardens and in the church itself. So bless, it's one of the Beatitudes, right, of the eight Beatitudes in that Sermon on the Mount by Jesus. Blessed are those persecuted for the sake of justice, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Again, we talked a lot about the kingdom of heaven. And those who are courageous and brave enough to fight for justice, then it is for them uh, key to the kingdom of heaven, fighting for the right thing. We'll see some other quotes. It is exactly here, the law of karma. Again, the church and the garden of the Beatitudes. Uh, it is in Matthew 7, saying, Judge not that you shall not be judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. This is a very simple expression of the law of karma, the law of eternal justice or perfect cosmic justice as we know it. We'll go further now. And we see just that example of uh, Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. We saw that the disciples in the gospels are surprised about it and they asked Jesus, what are you doing? And Jesus answered, I am washing your feet as your servant, so you may learn to serve the world. Here the concept of righteousness, of service to the others, and uh, the example given by Jesus, so that his apostles and disciples would do that. And as we saw, this has inspired many, many uh, pure souls to do so, to serve. And we saw that it's also connected very deeply with the human values, righteousness, and that when we serve someone else, it is the divinity, the divine principle, the love, the human values in us that serve those in the other. We'll go further now, shortly, on the human value of peace. One of the Beatitudes of the Eight Beatitudes is this one. You saw the you see how it is in the gardens there. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. We talked about that. The more we identify with the peace inside, then we are more connected with that human value and all the human values, and we identify more and more with that state of consciousness that is divine in us. We see further how it is expressed. Another of the eight Beatitudes, blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. The concept that we saw also in human values, then when our heart is pure, then it helps us connect with that inner treasure, with that inner chest, the treasure chest that is in us, which is the divinity, the divine principle in us, the human values in us. We'll see further how these things are expressed. Very simply, a peaceful mind is the abode of love by such a sign. We see here it is inside the Church of Beatitude. You see it is octagonal with eight angles and sides. And uh, you see the, the windows, the vitrage are in, uh, in uh, Latin. 
So Beati, Beati, etc. So peaceful mind is the abode of love, the connection between love and peace. When our hearts are filled with peace, with um, uh, peace, then we ex we can experience that love. We'll see further now, more expressions. Just coming to the end of non-violence. This is a very uh, new and important uh, message stressed by Jesus. That is different from the ancient testament. Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Although the deeper message here is, of course, the cosmic justice, karma. But now I tell you, said Jesus, do not take revenge on someone who wrongs you. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, let him slap your left cheek too. When someone asks you for something, give it to him. When someone wants to borrow something, lend it to him. Very famous example of non-violence. We'll see the next quote expressing that idea very shortly. Uh, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who, who persecute you so that you may be in the sons of your father who is in heaven. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? And if you read only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Again, this is the important difference. And the new message that Jesus brought that I inspired so many people, that we are supposed to love everyone, universal love. We'll see further how that is expressed. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Again, exactly the law of karma in the positive way, one of the eight Beatitudes. And we'll see further another expression in the message of such as education in human values. People should bear in mind that non-harming is the supreme virtue. Do not cause harm to anyone by thought, word, or deed. Not only deed, but our thoughts also have an influence at our words also as well. Develop the quality of forbearance and forgiveness and refrain from harshness in speech at all times. Realize that if you give up forbearance and forgiveness, you will have no peace. And we'll see in the next quote, how is it connected? To have inner peace, we have to forgive. Whatever anyone may do to you, do not bother about, you, about it. If you resort to retaliation, you will only worsen your own condition. So bravely face such attacks and do not allow yourself to get agitated over them. For spiritual transformation, the qualities that are needed are kindness, love, forbearance, and compassion. That is the message of the human values. And we'll see how it is connected with the message of Jesus. This is Paul in one of his letters. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control, almost the same words. We'll see further, coming to the end of that presentation, that quote in uh, such as education in human values, there is only one religion, the religion of love. There is only one language, the language of the heart. There is only one caste, the caste of humanity. And there is only one God, his omnipresent. This is the message of universality. So we come now to the end of this presentation and we'll read a message which is the praise to love. It is the Apostle Paul's first letter to Corinthians chapter 13. It's very well known. We'll read it slowly as like a meditation. After all these concepts, trying to take in these ideas. And at the end of this session today, we'll also hear it put into music by dear George, uh, who will play it with his guitar. But now we just read the text slowly. So what just is that praise? What is that praise to love saying? We'll see this beautiful message in the next slide. If I, speak, if I speak the languages of men and angels, but have no love, 
I am like a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have no love, I am nothing. And if I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and if I give my body to be burned, but have no love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love has no envy. Love is not puffed up. Love has no pride. It does not behave itself unseemly. It takes no thought for itself. It is not made angry. It thinks no evil. It takes no pleasure in wrongdoing, but rejoices in truth. It bears all things, has unshakable faith, hopes fully, endures all things. Love never fails. Though prophecies may come to an end, tongues may cease and knowledge may vanish away, love has no end. For our knowledge is only in part, and prophecies give only a part of what is true. But when that which is perfect will come, then that which is in part will be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I thought as a child, I reasoned as a child. Now that I have become a man, I have put away the childish ways. Now we see things dimly, as if in a mirror, but then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I will know in full, even as I have been fully known. Till then, faith, hope, love abide, these three, and the greatest is love. Thank you very much, dear Raksha, for reading the so beautifully, it's very important message. And now it is Vasiliki, back to you. Thank you very much, dear Brigitte, for this wonderful presentation. And now, for a few minutes, because we don't have much time, if any of the participants would like to ask questions orally or writing in the, uh, in the chat, we will uh, be happy to have them and Brigitte to answer. We see that Esther Chris wrote in the chat asking, I guess it's a question for all of us and we'll all answer during the workshop after saying, which of the teachings of our Lord Jesus is your favorite? I guess this would be a question for all of us. Well, for me personally, you know, it's all what that we have talked about and especially the message of the kingdom of heaven being in us. I actually uh, enjoyed reading quite a lot about that topic, trying to understand better in depth, what does that mean? What is the kingdom of heaven? And understanding uh, better that it is that inner treasure and uh, enjoying the parallel with the human values 
that are also in our heart, uh, the treasure chest. So the, that uh, concept of having that inner treasure in our hearts and that the inner kingdom, the kingdom of heaven as being like, you know, uh, bringing our frequency, our inner vibration and frequency to as much as possible to the level of these values and to universal love, peace, nonviolence, etc. And that as much as we raise our vibration or frequency, then we create in us the kingdom of heaven. And then of course we can radiate it to more and more people in our in our being, in our thoughts, in our actions and all. So for me that would be my favorite uh, idea. Thank Sorry. you very much, dear Brigitte. And now it's a few minutes before 11. We will have a break for five minutes and then come back to have the workshop based on a wonderful experience of our dear Elena. Thank you. Hello, dear participants. Hello, how are you? I'm very happy to be here again today to facilitate this beautiful workshop on the topic that uh, Brigitte has explained so, so, in, so deeply and uh, wonderfully. And this workshop is about the finding of the five human values in Christianity in our daily practice. So when I started preparing for this workshop, I asked myself the question of, am I, am I aware of the practice of the five human values in Christianity in my daily life? I was brought up in a Catholic Christian country, which is Spain, as you know. And uh, even though I was brought up here in Madrid, in Spain, um, my parents did not uh, want to influence me regarding uh, religious beliefs. And they never compelled me to follow the, con the Catholic Christian religious practices. So uh, we didn't have these religious practices at home because they wanted to give me the freedom to choose by myself. Even though they wanted this, I took the first communion at the age of seven. And uh, because of I wanted to be faithful to the first communion promises, I used to pray in the night before sleeping because I found that it gave me comfort. And from 10 to 13 years old, I sometimes used to go to mass on Sundays on my own but I did not like going without my family. So I stopped going there later. Anyway, I always wanted to, to search for the real meaning of life. I grew up asking myself the real meaning of life, the real meaning of Christian message and how to be a good person. It took me a long time to really understand fully the message and especially to be able to practice it properly. When I finally came across the teaching of Satya Sai when I was 36, then I found the real compass to guide my life because it uh, fit well to practice five human values was suitable for the kind of life that my family was uh, trying to, to, to teach me, like, uh, you have to be free, you have to make your own choices, you have to understand how you behave and uh, be responsible and accept the consequences and all this. And this freedom was not very, fun, very, very easy to, to, to have uh, in practical ways because you always need a guidance, uh, something to, to focus on. Then for me, the five human values became the compass, as I said, the compass to my life, to guide my life. But then 
Uh, when I started uh, reading about uh, the message of Satya Sai and uh, about religions, about Christianity and all this, I came across a very beautiful uh, saying that Satya Sai message said, I do not want you to change your religion. If you are a Christian, be a good Christian. If you are a Hindu, be a good Hindu. If you are a Buddhist, be a good Buddhist, and, and so on with the other religions. So I, I, I started thinking about this and say and ask myself, am I being a good Christian? If I, if I live in a Christian country, I need to understand my religion and practice it, even if I don't go to church or any other places to, to do it. But uh, I, I started wondering and uh, focusing on these two ways that I was receiving to lead a good life and to be a good person. I wanted to learn about Christianity and I wanted to learn about five human values and I wanted to practice all together and see the, all the contacts and associations with this. Then, uh, as you know, I, uh, I, I started to, to learn about the Satya Sai education in human values at the age of 40, 40 years old. I, it was in 1994, more or less. And then uh, I wanted to become a, a Sai, Satya Sai education teacher one day. So I asked to go to Thailand and stay there for two months in the Satya Sai school in Thailand. This was in 1999. I was 42 years old at that moment. And so uh, one day in one of the lectures given by Dr. Jum Sai, the director, he made us think about our own religious culture and roots. And he highlighted the importance of knowing and loving the religion of the country where we had been born. He said that if we are born in a certain uh, religious uh, culture, we should learn well this culture. So this made me think again of the Satya Sai message. If you are a Christian, be a good Christian. And that day I committed myself to knowing and understanding the essential message of Christianity, the symbolism, and most important, to practice and experience the Christian teachings. Experiencing that by myself, without any influence or obligation. It was a free decision and it made me feel in peace with myself. Dr. Jun Sai also suggested us to find an inspiring depiction of the spiritual teacher in our religion. So amongst all the depictions that I knew of Jesus, Jesus in the, on the cross, Jesus with the um, heart radiating uh, love and energy and all this, I visualized, I suddenly visualized the Good Shepherd. And I liked it so much that I kept this as my inspiration then. The Good Shepherd connected me immediately with Satya Sai words when he explained his mission in 1947. And he said, I have a vow to lead all who stay away from the right path again into goodness and save them. So this connection made me feel very, very happy and very fulfilled in my heart. It touched my heart a lot. And uh, later I came back to Spain again and continued um, learning about human values and how to practice them in my everyday life and how to become a better person, etc., etc. And two years later, in 2001, I decided to go further in the understanding of Christianity and in the understanding of myself. And I decided to do the pilgrimage of the Camino de Santiago. It's also called the Way of St. James. And I wanted to do it on my own. You know that for Christians and in Europe, the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela is a very sacred place. It's 
the holiest place maybe in all Spain. So, as I said, the reason for my decision was that I felt that I needed to be with myself without distractions so that I could reflect within and also find the redemption, redemption from the wrongdoings of the past. And the Camino was the perfect place. Anyone can do this Camino, this pilgrimage. And I started in Leon and I walked for 316 kilometers that took me 16 days to, to get there. It was a real gift to find the route is marked with yellow arrows, painted on stones, trees, walls, lampposts, every, everywhere, so that you don't, you don't lose your, your route and you can reach safe and, uh, and uh, confidently to Santiago, even if you are not walking with anyone else. You met a lot of people. I met a lot of pilgrims in the way. Lots of people doing the same thing, trying to find the truth, trying to find them who they really are, and trying to find simplicity in life, trying to find um, um, other people, and the, especially the connection with nature. So all this made me understand the message of Jesus. The main message of Jesus is simplicity, is um, uh, finding that all the creatures are the, uh, the same, have God inside, love is everywhere, God, love is God, and you, if you feel love in your heart, then you feel connected to everything in, in, the, in the life. So I learned all this in the pilgrimage, and there were some rules also in the, in the hostels. You have to sleep there for only one night. You can... Um, you, you need to be grateful, you need to be respectful, quiet, have your inner silence, your inner peace, and share it with everyone you meet, and always saying everyone blessings in the Camino, like saying, you always say, good Camino, buen Camino, and see you later. And all this is taking you to a different experience of life and different experience of your real inner nature which is love which is friendship which is compassion which is tolerance understanding listening everything is developed during the way because you have so many hours in front of you i used to talk uh, to walk six or seven hours daily sometimes i met somebody in the way some some other times i was on my own and even I talk to birds, I talk to trees, and I talk to insects. So it's incredible how you communicate with all these creatures. And I always remember San Francis of Assisi, who also talked to the animals, because it's a very, 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 very natural. Suddenly you are on your own, a bird comes near you, a robin came one day near me and I offered the robin a little bit of bread, but the bread was so stale that the robin didn't like it. So he flew away and I thought, oh, well, he doesn't like the bread because he has got uh, many other possibilities to, to have uh, here, like uh, uh, cher uh, uh, how do you call this, um, like... Um, berries for example no so he's most interested in other kind of food that i cannot i don't he doesn't like my bread anyway and uh, i discovered then all the values during the the, the pilgrimage and uh, the more i walked the more joyful i became and so i found out the real meaning of uh, the message of jesus and satya sai too and uh, love your neighbor as you love yourself became a true experience. And then after the finish, when I finished the Camino, I found uh, writings that say, was saying, walk slowly, do not hurry, because what you have to reach is to yourself. Since so it was also very good, very good message. After walking so, so far and so much, so, so long, so for so many hours, the 
final objective was inside me, but the Camino helped me to find the calmness to understand this too. So the, after this, I understood that life is a pilgrimage and Santiago is not the end of the Camino, but the beginning, as Paulo Coelho very wisely said, the yellow arrows guide you so that you don't get lost and the compass of five human values also guide me so that I don't get lost, never again. So this is what I wanted to share with you of my experience, which was really transforma transformational. And I'm very, very happy and grateful to, to, to everyone that taught me how to follow this. And also to you, because you are here listening patiently until I finish and sharing this sharing. And now I would like all of us to go uh, also into self, uh, some, some self-inquiry about what we have uh, received from the from the five human values uh, uh, in Christianity that uh, Virgit has explained and has shared so beautifully and uh, we have emphasized this that they are part of Jesus message and then now we have we would like you to answer or to think about two questions the questions for the breakout rooms are going to be this. One is how do the five human values resonate within you in as part of Jesus' message? So how do you connect the five human values with Christian values and Jesus' message? And which message touches you most and why? which of the Jesus messages touches you most and why. So these are going to be the two guiding questions for the breakout rooms. And now uh, Esther Chris is going to show these questions in the chat box so that we can all follow. You will have 20 minutes in as you uh, normally in the, in the, in the rooms in six rooms and after the 20 minutes we will come back and share what we have found you can uh, either share with one representative that you choose in the group or uh, spontaneously if you like okay so i leave you with now with the breakout rooms thank you um, to have all to the truth all to the the values all together like truth love peace rightness and non-violence some sometimes it was like things like that came out in the in the talk because uh, we have a life to follow the teachings of uh, satya sai it helps a lot the teachings of jesus together with love and protecting others, um, uh, being non-violent, always and truthful, as long as we can also uh, be good to others. So it's a it's a process. Like all this is a process. The practice and the the discrimination all the time. And so this was the main thing that we talked in the group. Then now I would like to invite Basiliki to continue. <laughs> Thank you, dear Elena, for your inspiring, uh, really experience that you uh, narrated to us today. Thank you very much for this because I personally uh, did not know about it and maybe some other people also. So they found all the things you experienced and felt during this Camino. Uh, now I would like to invite dear Brigitte to say to us a few words again in our closing. Thank you, dear Vasiliki, and thank you, dear Elena. It was very inspiring to hear you, indeed, on that path of the Camino. 
just uh, to say a few words, which I shared a little bit uh, in the group, in the room, I will say it shortly here. Uh, I think it is the gift of the human values and of Satya Sai education and human values to remind us of the universality of these teachings. And for myself, I was uh, born and brought up in a very Catholic family in Belgium and France. I went to uh, very strict nuns schools, you know, with nuns dressed in black, only girls for all my scholarity since age three until 18. And at some point along the way, you know, uh, at first I believed in what I was taught, then I started to ask questions and I kind of lost faith because it was not universal enough. For me, it was this idea that only Jesus was the son of God and other things I didn't agree with. And then I started looking for more universal message. And I found it in the great spirits of uh, India and others like uh, Gandhi, uh, Robindo, Krishnamurti, Tibetan Buddhism, etc. And it's kind of uh, took me a long time through that rational and philosophical understanding to come back to the heart of the teachings and being brought uh, back, uh, back, I can say, to this place here, five minutes from where Jesus used to live and teach 2,000 years ago. I started also reading a lot about Jesus' uh, secret message or inner message. And the connection with the human values uh, have given a great opportunity, you know, to connect with everything, with the teachings of the human values and uh, Christianity in its deepest essence. So I'm thankful for that opportunity and for all the exchanges that were shared in our room and in all the room, very beautiful messages that were shared. So thank you to all. Vasiliki, your mic, please. Before the end, I would like to greet all of you before we hear the last melody that is very, very important. And uh, uh, to uh, say that we would like to see you, would be very happy to see you in two weeks time again on Saturday, October 29, to hear our dear Jordi speak to us on the five human values and the local major religions. Now we will hear the praise to love as it was written by Apostle uh, Paul to Corinthians and as it was put in melody by George playing his guitar. I would like also to say that the word love in Greek is agapi, and you will hear this word many times in this praise to love. Thank you all. I would like also to thank uh, Brigitte and Vasiliki and uh, Lena for conducting so nicely this uh, today's session. And uh, we have all learned a very important uh, phrase, wish in Spanish, buen camino. Is it okay like this, Elena? <laughs> yes, perfect. <laughs> buen even if buen we camino. Buen camino. Even if we don't walk physically on this uh, Camino de Santiago, but still we are all pilgrims in the path of human values. And uh, it is, yes, <laughs> we have also a virtual uh, uh, parade in our website with the Peace Friends. Keep it in mind, we can grow it more and more. Already many Peace Friends are marching there. So we will end, as Vasiliki said, with this uh, uh, uplifting and very powerful words of St. Paul. E ante sullo se, con antropo la luce, e ton angelo, 
Αγαπημέ μη έχω Γεγώ να χαλκώ Σηκώνει κι βαλό Αλλά να ζω Και αν έχω προφητεία Και ειδώ τα μυστήρια πάντα Και πάσαν την γνώση Και αν έχω πάσαν την πίστη μου Ως θεώρη με θυστάνει Αγάπη δε μη έχω Ουδέ Και αν ψωμίσω πάντα τα υπάρχοντά μου και αν παραδώ το σώμα μου ή να καυτίσω με αγάπη δε μη έχω ουδέ οφελούμε Η αγάπη μακροθυμή Χριστεύεται η αγάπη μου ζηλή, η αγάπη μου περπερεύεται. Μου φύση ούτε που κασχημονεί, μου ζητεί τα εαυτή. Μου παροξύνεται, μου λογεί. Oh, 
Thank you. 